Russell, welcome to DC. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, got a quick one. What was it like yesterday or today arriving at this new facility, but seeing familiar faces like Scotty, Pac-Man, Ish, and others? Uh, you know what? It was uh, it was great, actually, man, once um, this whole process, um, kind of getting here and getting acclimated and coming to the facility, seeing all the guys, obviously, but seeing a lot of familiar faces um, in the medical area, um, assistant coaches, um, obviously, Scotty. Uh, players as well um, definitely gives you a sense of comfort. Uh, you got some familiar faces that uh, that you're comfortable with, so that was uh, definitely cool to see. And um, I'm happy uh, to be a part of you know create those relationships and continue those relationships as well. And just one more question for me: um, You've collaborated with great players throughout your career. What will it be like now to partner up with Brad, trying to lead the rest of this young group to a potential playoff spot? Man, I'm super excited about it, man. Brad is superstar talent. Um, he, he proved that and showed that last year uh, with what he had. And he's just only going to get better. My job is to come in and continue to uplift him, try to push him to be better. Um, and that's all I'm here for, man. And I'm happy to be a, be a you know, his, his counterpart and, and try to make the game easier for him. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Appreciate it, man. Welcome to town. Thank you. Fred. Hey, Russell, welcome. Thank uh, you, uh, I'm wondering, you obviously know the coach quite well. Uh, how have you evolved since the last time you were playing for Scotty? Do you see any differences or is it just kind of sliding in and the same old stuff right away? I mean, <laughs> obviously there's some differences. Uh, uh, I'm a little older. Uh, Scotty's a little older. Part, but the great thing about me and Scotty's relationship, we always stay connected. We always been in contact um, throughout my whole career. Scotty was a huge part of the reason why I'm able to do some of the things I'm able to do now. Um, he said he gave me a chance, gave me an opportunity to go out and make uh, silly mistakes, some of the mistakes I still make today. Um, he allowed me to do that. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that because I learned so much about myself, about my game, about who I am as a player. Happy and excited to kind of be back with him um, and continue our, 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 through our friendship, but that's all I'm going to name the basketball uh, court as well. Yeah, just about about you and Scotty since uh, you know the last time you guys, the last time you guys were together. Yeah, I mean, obviously it was uh, some years back, but me and Scotty, we've um, stayed in contact the whole time, and uh, Scotty was um, first. Coach, to give me a chance to go out and uh, basically go out and mess up and uh, allow me to do so many uh, great things on the floor that I'm allowed to do today. Um, and I'm grateful for his opportunity to be able to allow me to go out and uh, play my game and, and do that, you know, each and every night. So um, I'm super excited to kind of be back, um, continue our friendship, obviously, um, and also, um, you know, to be playing for him. So I'm excited about it. Ava? Hey, Russ, welcome. Uh, nice to get to talk to you finally. Um, just wondering, obviously, you, you had such a big shift in your career going to Houston last year after the franchise you were with for so long. Doing that again the second time around, do you feel like you know things now just about making the organizational shift and, and trying to understand the new system and everything? Do you feel like it's almost going to be easier the second time around for you? Um, you know, it's, it's always tough to be able to get up and move. It's tougher for me now, and I would say not for me, but my family and my wife, because she has to move all my kids and <laughs> all of our kids and stuff, and then find schools and uh, places to stay. So that's the, the most difficult part because I know the stress it, it kind of puts on my family. Uh, for me personally, um, I kind of just go with the flow, uh, but that's the, the most important part about my life is my family. So uh, just get acclimated as a, is an important thing, especially for uh, the wife and the kids. And we asked Scotty the same question, but you're obviously such a known quantity. So many people have opinions about you. What do you feel like is maybe most either misunderstood about you or maybe misrepresented about you? Uh, where do you want me to start? <laughs> it's the whole thing. We have time. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I think the, the, the underlining thing about that is that uh, 
90 percent of it 100 percent of it not even true because a lot of times the things that are made up people don't actually know me um to be able to say anything about me um or what i'm about or what i believe in um, so a lot of it kind of goes in one or out the other but um i think the the biggest thing for me is um just kind of going and, and being myself which is easy because uh, being myself is um, i can be genuine and, and loyal and understanding um obviously i'm not a the easiest guy to understand and uh, whatever watch play whatever people may think but uh, me as a teammate me as a person uh, as a father um, that that's the most important part to me and um, i stand strong on that and continue to uplift my teammates organizations uh, inspire people around the world and that's that's kind of all i i worry about is impact and inspire and that's something that i been with since day one and that's the most important part about me being able to have this platform and use it uh, to be able to help impact and inspire many people kids children around the world because um, i've been blessed with it to be able to do so and i feel like that's my blessing to be able to impact and inspire many people as possible all right thank you russ appreciate it yeah da russ what's up man what's going on with da what's happening I'm good, man. I'm good. Welcome to DC, brother. Thanks, brother. Man, hey, um, the Wizards the last couple of years have been very public and transparent about how they want to reset their culture as an organization. What does good culture organizationally look like to you? Uh, good culture, culture. I mean, I, I've been lucky, and and I was lucky to start in such a great culture in Oklahoma City, um, organization that you know. And kind of set the, the staple myself, Kevin, uh, James, uh, Jeff Green. At the time, we kind of set the culture. Uh, we had Perk bring, brought in to kind of bring that hard nose, put your head down, get to work mentality. And I think um, being around here, I can already see in, in day one or two that we have a lot of guys that love to work, that love to work, that want to put the work in, that understand uh, what it's like to put the work in. And for me, I'm just happy to be able to be a part of it, especially at this point in my career, to be able to come to organizations and be able to help, uh, whether it's enhance the culture, to bring a little more energy and, and uh, excitement to the culture. Uh, but I'm definitely just here to help and make sure that, uh, you know, the culture here is in the right direction. And it's already uh, great since I've been here. So I'm just excited to kind of keep keep it going. And, and you were you were famous for getting to practice at eight in the morning, seven thirty. You know, and I know you did that just because that's what you do to get ready. But what do you think the 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 rub off is when other young when young players see the best players get there early? Well, to well, before I answer the question, I, I, I'm not famous for it. This is what I do. It's how I do it. It's not, yeah, it's not yeah. a thing for me. Right, know, right. That's the the most important part, and that's something that I want to just make clear. Like I do, um, I still do it. question um i hope it brings um, a sense of just people know what to follow yeah yeah i hope it man i just hope it brings a um obviously people in the in the, the guys on the team have something to follow look 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 at look up to um bring some leadership you know that's a huge part of uh, just who i am as being able to be a leader i strive myself on trying to be uh, one of the best leaders in the game not just on the floor but off the floor great great habits Creating consistency, creating things that people can follow and can learn from as they continue their career, and if they go to other teams or if they stay here, but they can do something they, if they talk to me or something in the organization that can help them uh, their own path. Thank you, Dave Johnson. Hey Russell, welcome to to DC. Um, you just mentioned about health, Scott Brooks. Uh, you know, allowed you to make mistakes and allowed you to grow. Can you just talk about um, why obviously you've stayed connected with him and, and uh, what it is like to play for Scott Brooks and, and maybe the trust he puts in players? Yeah, I think the, the trust part for me uh, was huge uh, when I was young and allowed me to kind of make mistakes, give me an opportunity because uh, to be honest, man, a lot of coaches and a lot of uh, just situations that you may be, you may not get an opportunity to be able to go uh, on the floor and make mistakes, uh, have an opportunity to kind of play through mistakes, not just play mistakes and get subbed out. But Scotty allowed me to do that, um, allowed me to, to get better. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful and grateful for that. So um, and I always kept in contact with him and his family uh, because we created a, a 
a relationship, not just a, at work, but a, a friendship. And now being able to kind of revisit that is it, it's great. Um, obviously, I'm at a different point in my career. Scott has been coaching for some time as well. Um, but I think it's great, man. I'm excited about it. Uh, and I know he is. We've, we've talked already just about different things that, uh, you know, old stories, which is great because we have so many different memories of us being together, um, the good, the bad. Um, so I'm excited about it. Do, do you have a favorite story? A favorite story? Um, I wouldn't say a favorite, but one thing I know about Scotty is um, just his personality. I love, um, you know, how Scotty's just, I would say, uh, they call it a player's coach, uh, where you can, you can have a conversation and talk about anything. Um, he's always available uh, to, to sit down and talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. And to me, I, that's something that I, um, I'm grateful to be able to, to have, a, obviously, a coach to be able to do that and sit down and, uh, you know, talk about whatever it is that I need to talk about. Thank you. Chase. Hey, Russ, welcome. Thank you. Um, you are used to, throughout your career, playing for contenders and really good teams. And this franchise hasn't won 50 games or been to the conference finals since the 1970s. How do you size up the potential and the opportunity to win here? Um, Sides are really high um, every 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 season. I come into uh, the objective, regardless of what team, what's on the team, it's one goal, and that's to strive to win a championship. Um, if you don't win, it's only one champion. All, all other teams fail, um, and that's kind of how I look at it. So it does not the mindset and mentality is not even remotely different. It stays the same um, for me personally. Um, and here, uh, my job is to be able to bring the same mentality here and find ways to be able to help and advance the program. And it's a roster full of a lot of young players, a lot of guys who are developing in this league. Well, generally, what do you expect from your teammates? Um, I expect them to be them. I think the big, biggest thing is be who they are. That's how you learn. That's how you get better. You make mistakes. This is how uh, you see some of the great stars of our league and young stars. You see the things that they do make mistakes first, you have to learn, you have to understand, and you have a lot of guys that can be really, really good. Uh, go out and compete and play hard. That's the biggest thing. All the X's and O's and all the other stuff is, will come, but playing hard and understanding what it is to compete um, is the most important part and everything else will fall in place. Jonathan, Fagan. Hi, Russ. Um, did you want to be traded? And if you did, what led you to feel that way? Um, well, I think, you know, I'm here in Washington and you know, I'm happy about where I'm at and understanding that this is a new journey for me and understanding how um, important it is to, to focus on where I'm at, focus on the team, the organization, the city, the community, uh, the people here, because that's who I am as a, as a person and as an athlete. So that's why I'm at. Thank you. Glenn. Glenn Consort. Hey, Russ. Welcome. Sorry. Thank you. You mentioned earlier how, you know, when you were a young player, you were allowed to play through mistakes. But your game has really been impressive because you've been able to seem to improve every year you've played trip averaging triple doubles you know mvp of the league um you're a different player now than you were when you were younger how do you coach you now versus a young russell uh shit i mean you mad ask scotty that one he probably got the answer to that one <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I know you're hard on yourself. I know you're hard on yourself. I'm very, very hard on myself. Nobody's more hard on myself than, than me. Um, and every year, like you mentioned, man, I, I try to come back better at something. Um, and that's my goal every year. I try to come back better at every aspect of my game because I feel like I can do everything. Um, and that's just how I believe. Um, as far as coaching, um, I'm very coachable. Never had any issues with any coach of being coachable. Or, um, understanding the game and, and listening. I'm all ears when it comes to, to coaching, and Scotty knows that. Um, so I'm going to just be all ears again. Um, 
as I continue my journey and my career and, um, and listen to uh, what is told to me and go out and compete uh, the best way I know how to. Thank you. Scott Abraham. Hey, Russ, welcome to D.C. Uh, glad to Thank have you. you in the district. Um, a little, I want to expand a little bit on Chase's question about winning a championship, and basically that's the only thing left on your resume in the NBA of winning that championship. So being here in Washington, what gives you that hope and belief looking at the team right now that you can win a championship here with the Wizards? Uh, well, before I answer the question, I don't agree with you on the resume thing um, because – I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think that if you don't have a championship on your resume, if that's the only thing you, you play for, I don't believe that's true, especially for me, um, as I look at legacy and understanding what that means. So I have a different perspective as it pertains to that. Um, but to answer your question, um, I do, um, every season I go in with the mentality to be able to strive to be the best. If I'm not striving to, to win the championship, then what's the point? And I believe that each NBA player and teams uh, coaching staff, they come in trying to be the best, regardless of the personnel, regardless of what you have, uh, what other teams have, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is what we have in our locker room, and that's the most important thing uh, to me. And we're going to strive to win as many games as we can and um, try to win a championship if we can, as long as we put our effort, our energy, our time, and our sacrifice, our minds, and our bodies to be able to do it. Um, you know, we can, live with, we can walk away and live with that. And a little fun follow-up. I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I know you're a big Cowboys fan. So how's that going to mix here in Washington with the burgundy and gold? Uh, well, we're going to have to see, but I'm definitely going to stay a Cowboy fan for sure. <laughs> you sure about that? Second thoughts there? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm a Cowboy fan for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Russ. Yeah. Tim Reynolds. Russell, I am – I, I, I had a question, but what you just said sort of triggered me to ask a different one. Yeah. How do you define resume? I mean, what, what, if it's not all about it, I mean, how, how do you define legacy? How do you define See, that resume? Uh, my legacy is defined on, um, and I've, I've had time and just over the course of my career, I understand that legacy for me is, is based on how many people I impact and inspire um, along my journey. Um, I believe God has blessed me with this platform to play basketball, yes, but also um, to impact and inspire so many people across the world um, and being in the community, understanding uh, what it's like to be in my position is something that I take very, very seriously. I'm very intact to uh, my community, my underserved communities, um, my African-American communities, and um, each day, as much energy and effort I give to the game, I give back to the community the same way, and I've been doing that for since I've been in the league and understanding why it's important. Um, yes, legacy on the basketball terms of the, you know, whatever the, the people that determine your legacy, but I don't, I just don't, me personally, my legacy, I, I believe is, is and how I see it is how many people I impact and inspire across the world, because to me, that's more powerful um, as we see our society and the way that things are going and how it can move in, in Things can go south very quickly, as we as we've seen, um, and I just that's just how I see my legacy, and uh, you know as I look forward and kind of my career and my my life after basketball and while I'm playing, um, as to how many people I impact and inspire along the way. To follow up, Russ, you used the word platform, and part of the reason why everybody went to the bubble was that platform with the Black Lives Matter on the court with some guys having, you know, messaging on the backs of their jerseys. Now that it's going to be, quote, unquote, more back to normal, I guess, in this new season, how, how do you want those messages to continue getting out? How do you want NBA players to keep using that platform? Uh, now? I, think, I think each NBA player have a platform and can use it with whatever they're most comfortably. Uh, but for me, I can only speak for myself, and I know that I am – in the process of each and every day of doing things to help our underserved. Um, I'm very in tune because I grew up in, in underserved communities. I understand what it's like. I understand the, the struggle. I understand what it means or what it's like to be uh, a Black African-American in, in society. So I uh, personally make sure that I'm in tune to, to each community, especially in obviously being here in D.C., being in, in tune to what's going on in our school system, education, in our finance system, in our health care. Every aspect of our wealth gap in our, in our, in our society, in our world, um, I'm in tune with uh, because 
it's important. Um, me having children on my own, I understand and I, and I kind of know why it's important now. It's going to be a while, obviously, to close a, a wealth gap, but it's important that somebody um, and that has the power, has the ability, the impact, the outreach to be able to, um, you know, put their foot down and make a stand. And to me, to go back to my question, that is legacy. That's legacy. That's, that creates a legacy long-term for your kids, for their children. Um, and that's just how I look at it. Thanks, Russ. Good luck this season. Thank you. Heather. Hi, Russell. Welcome to DC. Uh, Thank you. God, God bless you and your wife moving <laughs> the three yeah. kids. It's hard. It's hard enough to get my two young kids to to target to the store, and you're <laughs> you're going you know different states. So, God bless you guys for that. Thank you. Um, so obviously we we know a lot about you. Are uh, the DC fans, the community, know a lot about you for everything you've done on the court? They can read the stat sheet. What are maybe some things as this community does get to know you more? whether it's likes, uh, things you do with your family, um, again, just anything of that nature that maybe we can't Google about you. Uh, what are some things that, that we should know about you and our, our viewers and fans should know about you? Well, just that I'm, I'm genuine. I'm, I'm a guy that likes to, to have fun and I also like to give. I like to give, give back. I think that's a big thing for me just because um, the way I play the game um, kind of uh, misconstrues people of who I am as a person and who I am and what I believe in. Um, and what I stand on, um, but obviously how I play and off the floor is two different people. Um, when I'm on the floor, um, you're right. I don't have any friends. I'm not trying to be friendly. I'm trying to bust somebody ass. I ain't got time to be trying to shake hands and do all the, all that. I don't have time for it and I'm never changing that. Off the floor, I'll continue to get back. I'll continue to be, uh, to serve our, our community, serve the communities here, serve the communities where I'm from, uh, continue to, serve our underserved, continue to find ways to be able to change our system and our society, continue to do things for my family, continue to do things the right way. I'm all about trying to do things the right way, regardless of if anybody like it or not. Um, my thing is making sure that I'm doing the right thing for the right people and impacting as many people as possible um, with my family um, and with the people around me, my circle, my team. Um, and that's what uh, the people around here can expect from me because uh, I am a man in my word, so if I say that I'm going to give back and do things in the community, I definitely will. So, And being in D.C., I mean, you talked about some of the, you know, enacting change and being in the, at, I mean, was that even, did that enter your mind as, as you know, the decision was, or as a trade, but, you know, as you're thinking about coming here, um, is D.C. kind of the perfect place or a, a really good place to make that happen? Absolutely. Um, you know, so many, obviously here in D.C. and much African-American history here, understanding so many different things that um, I like to tap into personally and understanding and understand a lot more about the community, understand about the underserved here as well. Um, and I'm definitely already doing my due diligence on who I need to talk to um, and understanding how I can impact and hit the ground running. I'll definitely continue to making those contacts and finding ways to do so. Thank you. Matt Paris. Hey, Russ. Welcome to DC. Uh, Thank you. Brad was, yeah, Brad was saying yesterday about what it was like to face you as a competitor and how he's glad that you're on his side now. Just where does that passion, that intensity come from? And did you always have that as an early age? Like, where did that intensity develop? Uh, yes, I definitely always had it at an early age. Uh, uh, started just when I was young and, and trying, to, trying to go out and go get it. I always mentality of just you want something you got to go get it um, and I created this kind of why not mentality which is something I kind of lean on and stand on is kind of my motto uh, why not me why not be the, the person to, to do different things that nobody's ever done before um, and that mentality stayed with me um, and it sticks with me to this day because it allows me to, to go out and play do things that I want to do uh, and knowing that I'm competing and leaving it on the floor uh, had this energy and this swagger about myself uh, and I know where it comes from I know why I'm doing it I understand uh, the reason I understand how it can impact uh, other people um, how it can uplift them so I just constantly bring it because I know one thing I learned at an early age is being consistent is hard 
doing the same thing over and over again at a high level is difficult. And I really, really pride myself on doing that. So being a, a competitor and being doing it every night um, takes some sacrifice uh, on my side uh, from people that's close to me that it may not be, you know, may not be so good, whether it's my family, my mom, my dad, my wife, uh, the extra hours in the gym and understand why I need to be consistent and understand why it's important to me to be able to make sure I bring the energy and effort because I, I feel like I owe, always owe that to my teammates, to the organization that I'm with because they, if they expect that from me, then I will make sure I bring it. And when you were teammates with Brad at the All-Star game two years ago, did you guys have a chance to interact much or was there any oh, interaction? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's All-Star game is tough to interact, but me watching Brad and seeing uh, him and competing against him for years, um, we've always, I've always been a huge fan of his game because he, he goes and competes and he's like a silent assassin. He don't really say much. Uh, he kind of just kind of goes and goes in the game. But once the game starts, uh, he gets to it. And that's a, something I love about him always, just watching him. And obviously he's gotten better and better each and every season. Um, and I'm just excited to be able to play alongside of him and uh, help him in any way I can. Thank you so much. Michael Lee. Uh, hey, Russ, how you doing? What's up, man? Uh, welcome to D.C. Uh, well, I just want to ask you about the number, uh, number four. I mean, obviously, the number zero is what you've worn your whole career. And yeah. there's another guy who wore that number in D.C. that I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, what did you go back to number four? And, and what your thoughts on the, uh, the previous guy who wore zero in this city? Um, well, uh, for me, um, I had an opportunity to get zero. And I had an opportunity to pick kind of what number I wanted. Uh, obviously, I could have stayed with zero if I wanted to. Uh, but I just decided, decided to, uh, it's kind of my first time in my career, I can go back to my origin, original number. Uh, when I got to Oklahoma, even at UCLA, I got there, Aaron Apollo had it, UCLA. And then I got to Oklahoma City, um, Nick Collison had it. And then when I got to Houston, Daniel House had it. So I never had an opportunity to kind of go back to my original number. Uh, four is my favorite number. Uh, for me, it's a, a representation. Uh, um, and not the number of uh, people, but to me, it, it reminds me of just who I play and what I play for. And that's my family, my wife, my kids, uh, my mom, my dad, my brother. Like it reminds me and it gives me a sense of my roots and where I started from and, and my, where I get it from. Because I mean, I have four of my, when I was, since I was, I, I can remember. And it's something that um, allows me to get back to, you know, why I love the game, why I fell in love with the game, why um, I play the game, who I play it for. Um, and, you know, I'm just happy to be able to uh, have that, that number back. Uh, so I'm excited about it. And, and last, what was your attraction to Washington? Why was that the place where you wanted to uh, be at this stage in your career? Uh, say it again. Your attraction to Washington. Why is it where you wanted to be at this stage in your career? Um, I think, um, you know, once I got traded here, um, I was – Obviously, there's so many familiar faces here, but not just that an organization that is uh, in the path of trying to trying to trying to do the right things culturally, trying to do the right things in the community, trying to do the right things on the, on the, on the basketball court, but also standing for um, the values of our organization, the values of uh, the people here, um, and that to me that's a, a, a huge thing for me, just how people are. I think the the, the thing a lot of people don't realize is uh, when you basketball is you only go play a, a short amount of time in your life, but those relationships you gain while you play, the people you meet along the way, the people you impact along the way, uh, those last for a lifetime. And that that's something that you think about. I Man, I've had to think about as I've gotten older and understanding, like okay, you know, as you move to if I move to a different place, understanding the people you're around, understanding the people uh, that you associate yourself with, and there are so many great people here. Um, that I know personally that I've had relationships with before I was here um, and I'm just happy uh, to be here. So 